Hey everyone, so Street Fighter 6 is officially out today and to celebrate the release of this game, the game I'm probably most hyped for for this year, I thought I would give 5 little tips for people just coming into the fighting game genre as a whole or starting out with Street Fighter in general. These little tips and tricks really helped me when I was sort of transitioning from being an absolute noob at fighting games to sort of taking the genre a little bit more seriously and I would just like to share the information because you know the fighting game genre as a whole is a little bit niche and I think there will be with how popular Street Fighter 6 has been an influx of new players and I think these tips should help people so if we can prevent people from getting discouraged that's always a good thing. Now before we get deeper into this I'm not like a super advanced player uh, I think I can find my way around the fighting game and I think I'm fairly decent. I have been playing the genre for a long time and again, I've picked up these tips over the years and they helped me so hopefully they'll help you as well. The other thing to go over is Street Fighter 6 already has a lot of resources to help you learn. So this video won't be going over things like combos or how to play characters or frame data or all of that. All of that is explained pretty well in game. These tips will focus more on strategies for improving and sort of mentality things and what to focus on early on when you're getting started. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this. If you do enjoy this video, make sure to like this video. Also subscribe if you're enjoying the content. There will be a lot more Street Fighter 6 content on the channel, including videos of just me playing the game, tips, tutorials, whatever character guides we'll see where this all goes so yeah without further ado let's get into tip number one which would be to focus on the fundamentals rather than combos this is something i always tell people when you pick up a fighting game and you go through the character tutorials you'll probably come out knowing at least some combos now if you're completely new to the genre these uh, will be very hard for you to execute and again I don't have the game early this is probably something I should say so I don't know what the tutorials look like for SF6 in terms of like how they split the modern and the classic controls but you'll have some knowledge of combos if you do the combo trials out of these early on you'll probably practice and memorize a couple of them and you'll have some basis for offense However, when people focus on combos, it often comes at the expense of knowing fundamentals, which early on are way more important. What I mean by this is knowing things like how to anti-air, how to break throws, how to punish your opponent, these things are way more important than knowing a certain Ryu combo. Over a long term period, knowing how to consistently anti-air will be much, much more beneficial. Luckily, Street Fighter 6 does help with this and there are dedicated tutorials for most of these systems built into the training mode. So my tip would be focus on these. Take a look at the aforementioned anti-airs, really, really practice these and get these down. Practice how to break throws and how to counter throws in general how to counter the drive system here i'm especially talking about the drive impact which i think is going to be the real noob killer of the game i think early on and especially in the lower ranks a ton of people are going to be very spam happy with drive impact and knowing how to counter that early will save you a lot of frustration and then as you play more and you get the fundamentals right, the combos will sort of just follow naturally, but you will have the combos and also have much more of a solid base understanding of the game's mechanics. Moving on to tip number two, this would be do not rely on jumping too much. When players start out with fighting games, they often get into the habit of constantly jumping. And it kind of makes sense as early on when people do not know how to counter your jumps, it really does seem to be easily the best movement option. You can avoid attacks, you can get in on your enemy, you have the extra benefit of starting a combo with a jump attack which just tacks on extra damage. It just all seems beneficial, again, when people don't know how to counter it. However, this sort of bunny hopping playstyle is a very bad habit to get into and it is actually something that took me ages to break out of as well. Tying it back to the previous fundamentals point, a player who has practiced their anti-airs will be able to counter your jump probably 9 out of 10 times, especially if you do not have strategies behind your jumping. 
So, by constantly jumping, not only will you not be able to get in on your opponent, but you'll also be eating a ton of unnecessary damage. I've seen this so many times across all of the fighting games I've played where I just crouch in the corner or just mid-screen and the opponent just keeps jumping at me and I just keep anti-airing over and over and over again and their offense is completely shut down because they are so used to relying on just jumping. Now this is especially an important point with Street Fighter 6 and its online systems. Online is smoother than ever, especially compared to how bad online was in Street Fighter 5. Reacting is easier than ever in this game. Plus, now every character is equipped with a crouching heart punch that seems to be the universal anti-air. Most people have tools to deal with jumping. What I would suggest instead is practice getting closer to your opponent on the ground. What a lot of intermediate and advanced players do is they will walk up and block on reaction to anything your opponent does. So that's something that's worth practicing. Practice taking a couple of steps forward every time and then blocking on reaction when your opponent does something. Learn how to use your dashes. Each character has slightly different dashes, slightly different distances covered, different startups. So getting a good view on what your dash does is important. This game also has the drive rush system, which is basically like a souped up version of a dash. That is also a great way to get in and it's something that's pretty important on your offense in general. The options here in Street Fighter 6 are more versatile than ever and knowing all of these options instead of just a jump is going to be very helpful long term. Believe me, getting out of the jumping habit will be a huge boost to your overall skills. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying here that jumping is never an option. There are great times to use your jump. For example, if your opponent throws a fireball from up close, if you can react and go for a jump and use that opportunity to get in and extend your damage, it's completely fine. You know, jump over a command grab and get free damage. It's all fine. It's just something that you shouldn't rely on all the time. Tip number three would be to practice punishing your opponent's mistakes. This kind of also ties into the previous two points. A lot of this ties into the fundamentals, but consistently punishing the mistakes your opponent makes is a great way to practice the fundamentals and also to get a ton of free damage in. People in the lower ranks tend to play very risky and play very unsafe in fighting game terms, which just means they throw out a lot of moves which are punishable. They tend to do a lot of shoryukens, tattoos, and just other risky moves in general. Learning to consistently counter these is very important. As an example, people tend to sweep a lot. Sweeps can be annoying as they knock down and they do deal a good chunk of damage. However, sweeps can almost always be countered if blocked. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, you don't have to do like a huge combo on your opponent, you can just use your own sweep, that is a perfect answer. But with that, by practicing always reacting to your opponent's mistakes, you are conditioning yourself and when you do have those combos down, you will be able to do the big damage punishes. It's the same thing with Shoryukens, practice what to do if you block one of these, I mean people will be very Shoryuken sure happy early on. Even if you don't get anything fancy, again, just go for a throw. That is already doing consistent damage to the enemy and you're already conditioning yourself to punish things and hopefully, which doesn't always happen, conditioning your opponent not to do that sure you can spam. It's one of the best intermediate skills people can pick up. That thing of always recognizing and capitalizing on your opponent's mistakes. That starts by consistently countering unsafe and risky moves. Tip number four here is going to be learn how to use training mode and do use training mode consistently. Even during the beta everyone could basically see that Street Fighter 6 has an excellent training mode and as boring as it sounds using it consistently is very important with getting better at a fighting game. Just to give you some examples this is what I tend to use training modes for. Number one is just warming up. I think to get consistently good at motion inputs, if you are using the classic controls, it is very important to practice. But even with modern, if you're using the modern controls, it's good to warm up and just get a feel for your moves. I once saw a recommendation to do all of your special moves 10 times from both sides to warm up before a multiplayer session or any game session. 
it's a great thing to get into the habit of and it's going to help your inputs and consistency a lot over the long term. Second thing, of course, practice mode is also great for practicing combos. Naturally, you can use the combos you have already learned or sort of experiment and come up with new things. Do corner combos, do different like inputs, different reactions. All of that is great. You can also use the built-in trainings, which I've kind of talked about, the anti-air practice, drive impact counters, etc. Also great to build up your reactions to those. You can use the record feature. If you're consistently getting caught out by a certain character or a certain move from particular characters, the best way to figure out a counter is to use the training mode. Pick that character, use that record feature to record the move and experiment with how to counter or avoid it. This also applies to the wake-ups, which also have a record feature. If you knock your opponent down with like something like a sweep or a throw, but you're consistently getting counter-thrown, jabbed, shoryukened, whatever by your opponent, the best way to come up with a counter is to record the dummy doing those actions and then practicing your own ways to respond. I know it might sound boring, but you know, fighting games are just like that, especially if people would like to transition from the lower ranks. It's honestly not any different than using something like an aim trainer or an aiming practice thing for any FPS game. Over the long term, training mode is going to be your friend, believe me. And finally, tip number five, probably the least gameplay related tip, but I think it's also pretty important to mention. This would be to ignore tier lists and just play who you want to play. Early on and throughout the life cycle of the game, there will be a ton of talk online about tier lists, like OP characters, cheap moves, this is overpowered, that is overpowered, etc, etc. People will be crying and whining left and right. It's just natural. It happens with every single game, every single time. My tip would be, just don't listen to any of that. Don't switch characters just because you hear that a particular character is top tier or OP. On the other hand, don't feel pressure to drop a character if people keep saying that, oh, that's an OP character, you're being carried, it's just because of the character that you're winning, you don't even know how to play, etc. Listen, fighting game balancing has been steadily improving over the years. This is not like some of those old games where a top tier character or an S tier character was actually seriously overpowered and something like a bottom tier would almost have zero chance against the top tier. That gap has closed so much. Unless you're playing at the absolute highest levels of the game, tier lists simply do not matter. Every single character is capable of winning against anyone else. Now, naturally, there are going to be good matchups and bad matchups. Using the classic example of Zangief versus Dalsim, that's a bad matchup for Zangief. It doesn't mean that either of the characters are overpowered, it's just a little bit tougher for Zangief, but it doesn't mean that it's impossible. These things are always going to exist, but if you can drop this mentality of, oh, you know, I have to pick up this character because X and X said that they are S tier and it's going to win me some games, I think dropping that is super helpful because in the end, the character you vibe with the most is going to be who you want to end up with. And as mentioned, for 97% of players, most of this thing around tier lists and moves being OP, most of this is never actually going to matter. If you want to play a top tier, play a top tier. If you want to play your favorite, play your favorite. Listen, if you try a top tier and it appeals to you, fine, switch. It's just people tend to be like, you know, pressured and people tend to think that picking up an S tier character will just like miraculously help them. And most of the times that is not going to be the case. So I hope with that you guys enjoyed these five little tips for Street Fighter 6. I'm going to be playing a ton of this game. And again, like I said at the start, there are going to be a ton of videos. So like I said, stick around for that. Feel free if you're already a SF6 player or a Street Fighter player in general, feel free to leave any additional tips that I might have missed out on. Let me know if this helped you. And yeah, uh, there will be more SF6 coming. Stick around for that. Thanks for watching everyone. Hope you enjoyed. And yeah, peace out and goodbye.